Good morning. This is Pastor J.W. Smith, pastor of New Salem Missionary Baptist Church, 2186 Hawkins Mill Road. We thank you again for coming in, joining us for this morning's worship service. We're unable to um, be able to meet at the worship facility. And so we're here to share with those of you who are um, willing to share with us as we come from my home this morning. Again, home is where the heart is. And again, we want to thank you. Uh, New Salem at 2186 Hawks Mill Road, Memphis, Tennessee, 38127 in the Fraser community is a growing church for growing people. Uh, we invite you to stop by and share with us uh, when we're able to reassemble. Again, we come this morning uh, thanking God for yet another day because God is truly able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. He is our rock, our help in ages past, our strength for years to come. He is our shelter from the storm and blast. He is our eternal home. Uh, if you would this morning, I want you to join me in a moment of prayer. Our Father in heaven, Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, once again, the more, Master, we come with our heads bowed and our hearts humble, realizing, Holy Father, your sovereign God, God all by yourself, and beside thee there is none other. We thank you, Holy Father, for watching over us, giving us health, shelter, and protection. Lord God, we know that it had not been for you on our side. We couldn't have made it thus far. Lord God, you've watched over us from the rock and of our cradles up until this day. We pray to God that you stay by our side, leading and guiding us along life's way. Lord God, we never could have made it this far without you, and we want to say thank you. Lord, we're unable to thank you for all of our blessings one by one. We ask, Holy Master, you would accept our prayers this morning as a collective thanks for all the good things you've done in our lives. Father God, you brought us up rough hills and mountains. You brought us through low valleys. You brought us through good days and bad days, storms and the rain. You brought us through weakness, dear God, and you brought us through strength. Through it all, dear God, you stayed by our side and you never left us alone. Lord God, there's been times in our lives where friends turned their backs on us, where doors have been closed in our face, where we thought we were going to drown in our own tears. But Father God, you stood by our side, dear God, and allowed your divine hand to wipe away our tears, dear God, and carry us on. Now, Father God, we want to say thank you. Lord God, we traveling now into uncharted territories, into dark days. Holy Father, we're fighting an enemy that we cannot see. But Lord God, we know you're God who knows all, see all, and can do all. And Lord God, we trust your Holy Father that you will protect us, dear God, as you have all to, all of our lives. Father God, we pray you wrap your arms around those that are, that are listening. Wrap your arms around those that are sick and shut in. Wrap your arms around those who ventured out, dear God, to assemble in your worship facilities. Father God, because you're God, God of all, everywhere and of all things. Lord God, be with us as there is only you can. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We thank you, God. Amen. Again, we want to say thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, many of you can tell I'm holding my cell phone in my hand. Uh, as he did with the Bible study, the devil had got into my laptop and he got into my tablet. And neither one of them wanted to work this morning. They worked all the way up until it was time to go live on this broadcast and they shut down. But I promise you today, the devil does a lie that God is an overcomer and through him we're overcomers in all these things through Jesus Christ that loved us. We want you to join us this day again as we seek to celebrate the, the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank all of you all that are tuning in right now. Uh, and again, let your hearts and your minds come in to a spirit of worship because truly God is able. Now, as we get ready <clears throat> to go into a word of encouragement, I want you to pray with me and pray for me. Uh, again, I'm not a video person. Uh, I am a God person, but I'm not a video person. I just like, but I just like serving the Lord. God bless you. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't you do it without me. Lord, don't you do it without me. And Lord, if you're healing, healing in this season, don't do it without me. 
Don't do it without me. God bless your heart this morning. Amen. That might not have sounded good, but it did feel good. God bless your heart today. I want you to take time with me to go with a scripture. I want you, if you have your Bibles, to turn to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25. That's the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25. We won't be with you long. We'll give you back time to get, give you time to get back to your bacon or your collard greens, whatever it is you're doing. Amen. Uh, but again, we need to just stop and tell the God, thank you. Uh, that it is well as it is. We are praying for all those that are sick. We're praying for all those that that are infirm with this uh, this illness, this pestilence that that's thriving among us. But we know the God we serve is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think. I'm going to put a cough drop uh, in my mouth right now again because the devil is busy. God bless your heart. Again, uh, let's go to Gospel according to Saint Matthew, the 25th chapter. I want to start down with verse 24. Amen. I can't hear you, but if you have it, say amen. If you're still searching, say, Lord, help. I heard somebody through Facebook say, Lord, help. Amen. So I'll give you just another minute. The gospel according to St. Matthew, we're starting in chapter 25, starting with verse 24. There you'll find these words. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where there is not, thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there has that that is thine. The Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slowful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore put my money in the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundantly. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And cast the wicked and unprofitable servant into outer darkness, and there shall be a weeping and a gnashing of teeth. That is God's word for God's people. I want to use just for a moment. Don't go to hell on what you think you know. Let me say that again. Don't go to hell on what you think you know. Many Unbelievers, unbelievers will die still being unbelievers because we who claim to be believers live our lives as if our God has no power. The world sees the church as a group of hypocrites that are no different than they are, that are no better than they are, that handle darkness and rough situations no better than they are. Unfortunately, they see our lack as God's lack. They see our inability as God's inability. They see our failures as God's failures. They, our, they see our weakness as God's weakness. The world sees us in t-shirts. They say, too blessed to be stressed. While wearing that t-shirt, we'll be cursing and fighting. They see us driving cars with tags. That says God is my co-pilot. But all the while we're demonstrating road rage. Trying to run folk off the road. They see churchgoers leave church. Talking about everybody in the building. Nothing good to say about anybody. Even the Lord himself. They see worshipers. Who sit in the house of worship. And they're praising their football teams and quarterbacks. More than they do the Christ they claim to serve. As a result, we make God look weak and we make his word look ineffective. So the bad Christians, the, the new Christians have no role models in church. They come to Christ, try to come to Christ, searching for answers, searching for ways out of the world, searching for light and darkness, 
But in those of us that are already there, who are supposed to be in the light, we only show them more darkness. We train baby Christians to be weak. We train them to be weak in God's word and to be casual about Christ. But the reality is this. There is no failure in God. And there is certainly no failure in his word. He says, my word is going out for me and it shall not come back void, but it shall accomplish that which I sent it. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand forever. Before one tittle or one jot shall fail, the world shall fail. There is no failure in God's word. Amen. And since there is no failure in God's word, there is no failure in God because God is his word. St. John says this. He says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Therefore, until we know God's word, we cannot in any way know God the Father. If we read on in that same chapter, John, down to verse 14, he declares, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld him as the only begotten son of, only begotten son of God, full of grace and truth. Therefore, we don't know the word. We cannot know God the Father. If we don't know the word, we cannot know God the Son. And as God the Son got ready to depart this world and go back to glory, he said, if I leave not, the comforter cannot come. So it was God's Son, Jesus Christ, who sent the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we don't know God's word. We cannot know God the Father. Without God's word, we cannot know God the Son. And without God's word, we cannot know the Holy Spirit. But be reminded for believers, the Holy Spirit is the power that resides in us. He says in action, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. This is the power that gives us the keys of the kingdom. This is the power that gives us the ability to walk on scorpions and tread on serpents. This is the power that gives us to stand before a world in darkness, letting the light of Christ shine throughout us. And so it is the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is God's word in us. The Holy Spirit is God in us. That's why God's word and God's work are designed to make us have power in the world. But without God's word, we have no father. Without his word, we have no son. Without his word, we have no Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we have no power. And that's why the people of God look powerless to the world. The flaw is not in God. The failure is not in God, but it is in us. First spiritual truth is this, that we come to Christ based on hearsay. None of us came to Christ on what we knew. We came to Christ on what we heard. We were told about this man, Jesus Christ, who was able to save anybody, who was able to keep our soul from a burning hell. We came to Christ because of what we heard about Christ. That's hearsay. That is the purpose of preaching. Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation for all those that believe. The first spiritual truth is that we come to Christ by hearsay. The second truth is this, that we grow strong in Christ only by study of the word. The word is designed to make us strong. That is the purpose of teaching. Preaching is designed to bring sinners to Christ. Teaching is designed to grow saints in Christ. And so until we study the word of Christ, we never become strong in him. That's why Paul told Timothy to study, to show that self approved unto God, a work when needed not being ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's a shame to be saved and not know the word of God. The third truth is this, that most of us who become believers never grow beyond sermonic hearsay. We live our lives on the milk of sermons, and never get stronger on the meat of teaching. It's amazing how many church members will sign a church roll. They'll live their entire life on a pew. They'll die and go to the cemetery without ever attending one Sunday school class or ever coming to Bible study. It's amazing that a great many of those who never go to Sunday school to Bible study will never even open their Bible to try to read the word of God. The mass majority of churchgoers have are based their eternal salvation and disposition solely on hearsay. We live and die 
by what mama told us and what we heard people say about Jesus, never going into the Holy Writ to study the word ourselves. And so we're basing our salvation on what we've heard. The problem is not new. The problem, the reason many people complain about long, boring sermons is not the fault of the preacher. The problem is this, that when the preacher is preaching, most of the members have no clue about who he's talking about and have no interest in the word of God. That's what makes a sermon boring. When you're hearing what you want to hear, when you're hearing gossip and lies, you can hear them all day long and you'll never grow tired. The problem is that we have no clue about God's word. That many of us won't come to church wanting to hear what we want to hear. The Bible say we have itching ears. We don't want the preacher to preach about Christ. We want the preacher to preach about prosperity and other folk business. The sad fact is that most church members know more about what's going on in other folks' house than they do about the house of God. They know about what goes on in most people's lives than they do about the life of Jesus. They know more about the business of other Christians than they know about the business of Christ. We want to know what we want to know, and that's what somebody else is doing or saying. In the modern church, we value hearsay more than we do his say. Hearsay is what we hear about other folks. His say is what the Bible has to say about God himself. James warns us. He says, be ye doers of the word, not forget for hearers, deceiving yourself. He reminds us that many of us are going to hell on a church pew, playing like we're hearing the word, but never hiding the word in our heart that we'll stop sinning. That's why David said, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. In other words, James said, many of us are going to hell on hearsay without ever investigating the word of God. We're trusting the word of man, not knowing what God himself said. Many of us think that the Bible, many of us only know the Bible by hearsay. We know scriptures by what we saw on somebody's t-shirt or we quote verses that we heard other people say. We never know what the Bible says actually. Therefore, we never know God. We know the Bible only by hearsay. We know God the Father only by hearsay. We know Jesus Christ only by what we've heard. And we know the Holy Spirit only by hearsay. But we never gain our own individual knowledge of God. He said, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And so our world now is perishing because we fail to take on the word of God. So many of us are going to hell on what we think we know. We think we know because it's what somebody told us. And more than likely, what somebody told us is from someone who never wrote, never read the Bible. However, I want to remind you that this is nothing new. Noah's folk, the people who lived in the day of Noah, except him and his family, they all went to hell based on what they thought they knew. Israel, when they got to the Jordan River, they didn't go in the promised land. They were banished to the wilderness of one for 40 years. They didn't go over based on what they thought they knew. When Jesus came into the world, he was rejected by the Jews. He was crucified the Jews based on what they thought they knew. The Bible says he was despised and rejected by his own. They esteemed him not because of what they thought they knew. When Nathaniel told that Jesus came from Nazareth, he said, could there any good thing come from Nazareth? He based his words on what he thought he knew. Because of our thinking, the Bible said hell is enlarged itself beyond measure and fools go in there making folly. We're on our way to hell happy because of what we think we know. The Bible talks about a rich fool who built barns and had so much of overflow. He said, oh, my soul in the morning, I'm going to build me some more barns. But he lost his soul that night based on what he thought he knew. The Bible talks about a rich young ruler who asked Jesus, what must I do to be saved? Jesus told him what the higher order things, and he gave up based on what he thought he knew. There was a Pharisee and a publican who stood and prayed. The Pharisee stood before God and said, Lord, I thank you. I'm not like other men. He lost his life based on what he thought he knew. Eve re responded to, to the serpent in the garden based on what she thought she knew. Adam and Eve sinned in God's garden based on what they thought they knew. 
And we find just like that many of us today are losing our lives, are losing our joy, are losing our peace based on what we think we know. So I come today to remind you, as the scripture does, don't go to hell or what you think you know. In this text, Matthew 25, we find Jesus giving three parables. The first parable is the parable of the ten virgins, five wise, five foolish, five saved, five lost. He closes chapter 25 talking about the king coming in his glory, separating the sheep from the goat. Those on his right hand, he'll say, come ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Those on his left, he'll say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, and inherit hell prepared for Satan and his angels. Those who went to hell based on what they thought they knew. Are you all with me? Give me a few minutes and I'll be through here. But in this middle verse, he talks about the parable of the talents, where the one who is in charge gives talents five to one, two to one, and he gives one to one. Those he gave five when he came back, he had taken the five and he brought the master back ten. He told him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou been faithful of a few things. Thou be ruler over men and enter thou into the joy of the Lord. One who had two gave him five. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. But this last servant, the one who had one talent, took his one talent and hid it under a rock, did nothing with it until the Lord came back. When the Lord came back, he went under the rock and gave his Lord a brand new shiny talent. It looked just like the talent the day he received it. And he thought the Lord ought to be happy with this. He said, Lord, because I'm giving you back exactly what you gave me. We fail to realize that God wants more than he gave us because he has an expectation that we will take what he gives us, use it for his glory, and he'll multiply it. He'll bless it. And he expects more in return. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over. When you take what God gives you and use it to his glory, you'll find your cup will be running over. There'll be more than you're able to use. That's why Malachi says, if you bring God what you got, he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room to receive. So if you find that you're running short of blessing, then maybe you're not giving God what the Lord desires. Our God looks at this servant and he tells this servant, he said, well, you say, you know me. The servant said, Lord, I didn't do any more than I did for you because I know you. I know you're a hard man. I know you reap what you have not sown. I know you reap what you have not strong. In other words, God, I know you. And because I know you, I did what I did. But the problem is this man did not know God as he did. The Lord said, well, if you knew me like you say you knew me, you would have had enough sense to take what I gave you and give it to somebody else who can do something with it. There are many of us today who are sitting on God's blessings, not doing anything with them. The Lord said you ought to have more respect for me than that. You ought to have more thanks for me than that. You ought to have more appreciation for me than that. He said, take what you have and give it. I don't know if I've lost you all or not. Give me just a second to find out where my camera is. And I'll be back with you. Amen, somebody. I'm still there. The devil, the devil is alive. He is busy. This man thought he knew God. And he operated based on what he thought he knew. But the Lord said, if you knew me like you knew, thought you knew me, you would have done something different than what you did with what I gave you. What he reminds us is that it's a shame to take what God gave us and sit on it. You ought to take what God gave you. If you're not going to do anything with it and give it to someone else. He said it would have been better off of you taking it and giving it to the banker. Taking it and giving it to somebody who had a desire to serve God in a more excellent way. He said because of what you thought you knew. I'm going to take what you had and give it to someone who had a better understanding of me. Because you operated in what you thought you knew. I'm going to take 
what you have and bless somebody who really needs it. And because you did what you thought you knew based on what you thought you knew about me, I want to take what you have. I want to cast you in the outer darkness where there's a weeping and wailing and a gnashing of teeth. In other words, God's saying, don't go to hell based on what you think you know. Are you all still here with me? As we look at this text, he reminds us that many of us are going nowhere because we don't know God like we think we know him. That those of us who are operating on what we were told as a child, on the story we read as a child, but we don't know God like we think we know the Lord. Now, if you want to be sure that you're going to heaven, you all love God and love the things of God. He said, if any man love me, he will keep my commandment. First John 3, 4 says, and we know we pass from death unto life because we love the brethren. In other words, you would take what God gave you and you would give it to somebody who would use it. That's how we multiply. If a farmer wants to multiply his seeds, he's got to sow it in the ground. If you've got anything from God that you want to increase, you've got to learn how to invest it. God said that you invested in his people. He will multiply it. And you will be able to come back and stand in the last day and hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I'll give you three things and I will go. But I want you to know today, you don't have to go to hell on what you think you know. Number one, you must know the pericope. P-E-R-I-C-O-P-E. The pericope. That is the organized word of God. I use the word pericope and not just Bible because we have a way of taking the Bible and pulling out words and pulling out scriptures. But the Greek term pericope gives the understanding that we don't take the word in isolation. Every word is a part of a verse. Every verse is a part of a scripture. Every scripture is part of a chapter. Every chapter is part of a book. Every book is part of a testament, and every testament is part of the Bible. We must know the word of God in its totality. We cannot pull out what we think we know, but we must know the whole word of God and what it's meaning. We must know the pericope, because the Bible says in the beginning was a word, and to know God is to know his word. He said the word was God, and the word was with God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. By his word was all things made. There was nothing made that was not made by him. So if you want to know even this world, you must know the word of God. Adam and Eve lost the garden because they didn't know the word. Israel didn't receive the promised land because they didn't know the word. David kept sinning because he didn't know the word. God's word is God among us. His word is his will among us. His word is his presence among us. If you want God in your life, you got to learn how to connect yourself to the word. There are many who are waiting for blessing, but you cannot receive the blessing until you receive God's word. He says in John 15, if ye abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. His word will guide you through your life. I heard him saying, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The writer said, thy word, the word or steps of a good man are ordered by the word of God. If you want to walk in this life and have have little trouble. If you want to walk in this life uh, and have Satan, you must stand on God's word. Uh, the only value in you uh, is the word of God. It's not the songs you sing. Uh, it's not the history you know, uh, but it's the God in you. Uh, the writer said, in us uh, we are earthen vessels entrusted with a heavenly treasure. So your value to God is his word in you. The only goodness in you is his word in you. We must learn to walk by God's word. We must learn to live in God's word. We must learn to eat God's word. And his word will grow us up. So if you don't want to go to hell or what you think you know, you need to know the pericope of God. Not only the pericope of God, but you must come to know God's preacher. Is that right? I hear folk to say uh, what the preacher
tell them, I came to tell you, God said I give you pastors after my own heart. I put shepherds over you. And Paul said in Hebrew that servants ought to obey those that have rule over them. For they watch over your soul that they may do it without grief. For if they do it with grief, it is not good for you. So I stop by to tell you, it's not good for you if you don't keep the preacher happy. And God all right, you got to learn uh, how to hear the preacher uh, and what he has to say. Uh, again, the Bible said, uh, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God uh, for all those that believe. Uh, is that right? Uh, but the record is uh, that faith cometh by hearing uh, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, and how can they hear uh, without a preacher? Uh, if then man uh, who buried his talent uh, had gone to his preacher, uh, maybe he would have had a word uh, to tell him uh, how to magnify uh, what the Lord gave him. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, don't talk about your preacher. Uh, don't run from your preacher. But you need to go uh, to find out uh, what does say the Lord. Just like your parent. God would tell a parent some things about his child that he will not tell the child. And God would tell your pastor some things about you that he will not tell you. I know you can pray yourself. I know you can read yourself. But you need somebody to care for your soul. Your children go to school. They get textbooks. But they still need a teacher. I know you got a Bible you can read. But you still need a teacher. That is your preacher. The Ethiopian eunuch was one day sitting there reading the word of God. And Philip came by and he asked this man, do you understand what you read? I heard him say, how can I unless some man help me? That's what God sends a preacher in your life, a shepherd over your soul to watch over you, to stand in the gap, to pray for you, to lead you in spiritual things. So stop trying to go to heaven on what you think you know, huh? but you need to know the pericope. You need to know the preacher. And I get ready to leave. Huh? It is a pure pericope in your life. Huh? There is a preacher in your life. And finally, huh? you must know the priest. Is that right? Huh? I told you John said, huh? in the beginning was the word, huh? and the word was God, huh? and the word was with God, huh? and the word became flesh, huh? and dwelt among men, huh? and that indwelling huh? was in the form of one called Jesus Christ, huh? the Savior of the world, huh? the priest for all ages. Huh? He's a great high priest huh? at the order of Melchizedek. Huh? He's the one who's able huh? to present us faultless huh? before us presence uh, with exceeding joy. Uh, he's the only wise God. Uh, he's the only power uh, who's able to keep us safe uh, from all hurt, harm, and danger. And if you want to know God, uh, you must know the priest. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I heard him saying uh, that uh, I am the way, uh, the truth, and the life. Uh, that no man come to the Father, uh, but by me. Uh, if you want to know Jesus, uh, you got to know God's word. Uh, I heard him saying I am the living word. I am the word of heaven. Ain't God all right? He is the word that became flesh among men. Ain't God all right? If you want to go to heaven, you got to know God's priest. He owns everything. For the psalmist says that the earth is the fullness thereof, uh, the world, uh, and they that dwell therein. Uh, you need to know Jesus. Uh, the Bible said uh, he came out of nowhere uh, and made everywhere. Uh, he stood on nothing uh, and made everything. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, by his word, uh, the sun shines day by day. Uh, by his word, uh, the moon comes out at night. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, and if you want to live, uh, we got to live in him, huh? for he is the author and the finish of our faith. Huh? The record says that every good huh? and perfect gift. Huh?
It come from the Lord. Huh? Ain't God all right? Huh? Don't go to hell huh? on what you think you do know. Huh? But you ought to know uh, the Son of God, huh? Jesus Christ, huh? the Savior of the world. Huh? There's a blessing huh? in knowing the priest. Huh? Because Isaiah said huh? that same priest, huh? he was wounded huh? for our transgression. Huh? He was wounded huh? for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is on him. And by his stripes, uh, we are healed. Uh, he's a man of sorrow, well acquainted with grief. Uh, he is born our burden uh, in the heat of the day. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, he was led uh, as a lamb among the shearers. Uh, he was wounded uh, for your sins and mine. Uh, look at our priest. Uh, he came out the upper room uh, when the garden of Gethsemane uh, and kept on praying. And uh, the sweat came down. Blood, huh? Ain't God all right? They came in the garden huh? and took God's priests huh? and whipped them all night long. Huh? They marched him huh? from judgment hall to judgment hall, huh? but he never said uh, not a mumbling word. Huh? He could have pointed his thing at you. Huh? He could have pointed it at me, huh? but he never said uh, not a mumbling word. Huh? They took a cat of nine tail huh? and gave him 39 lashes, 39 lashes huh? from a cat nine tails uh, was 356 marks uh, on the back of my Savior. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, they took a crown uh, of 72 thorns uh, and jammed them into his skull uh, and the blood came down uh, and he never said not a word uh, for your sins and mine. Uh, thank God uh, for my priest uh, because right early, uh, Friday morning, uh, they took my priest uh, put on his shoulders uh, two trees uh, and sent him marching up a hill called Calvary. Ain't God all right? Uh, they hung my Savior uh, between two thieves, uh, two nails in his hands, uh, one spike in his feet. Nothing. I heard somebody saying, if you be the son of God, you ought to come down and save yourself. But I'm glad that he would not come down to save himself. He decided to die just to save me. Died. Yes, he did for your sins and mine. He died. So right uh, to the tree of life. Uh, he died. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, until heaven got the news. Uh, he kept on dying. Until the sun went down. Uh, he kept on dying. Till the earth had a seizure. Uh, and began to really rock. Uh, like an old drunken man. Uh, he died. Yes, he did. Uh, until the veil was torn in two. Uh, from top to bottom. Uh, he kept on dying. Until the Roman soul that says, surely uh, this must be uh, the Son of God. Uh, ain't God all right? They took my priest uh, off a of Calvary's cross uh, and buried him uh, in a borrowed tomb. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, somebody said uh, it's finished uh, because Jesus is dead. Uh, they left that running uh, on what they thought they knew. Uh, on what they thought they knew, uh, the Jews closed the Torah. Uh, on what they thought they knew, uh, Islam closed the Quran. Uh, on what they thought they knew, uh, Jehovah with me close the white town uh, but I'm so glad uh, I'm not going to hell uh, on what they thought they knew uh, right early uh, Sunday morning uh, a voice called from him uh, saying Matthew uh, I want you to shake John uh, John, wake Mark up and Mark, I want you to call Luke and tell him it ain't over until God says it's over. Ain't God all right? Right early Sunday morning, my breeze over troubled water. Right early, my wing out of no way.
Sunday morning, uh, my great high priest uh, got up out of the grave. Uh, he stood on cemetery soil uh, and shook down a dying shroud. Uh, he looked toward heaven, uh, said, I died one time, uh, ain't gonna die no more. Uh, all power uh, is in my hand. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I thank God for I've had folk in my life uh, that when we were in the grave together, uh, everything was all right. Uh, but when they got up, uh, they forgot about me. Uh, but I got a priest uh, that when he rose Sunday morning, uh, Forget about me, uh, but I heard him saying, uh, let not your heart be troubled, uh, ye believe in God, uh, believe also in me, uh, for in my father's house uh, are many mansions, uh, if it were not so, uh, I would have told you so, uh, ain't God alright, uh, I don't have to wonder, uh, and I don't have to worry, uh, one thing I know, uh, I know I've been changed, uh, because the angels in heaven uh, done sign my name and some glad morning when it's all over now him some glad morning in the great band band some glad morning when I sing my last song when I preach my last sermon I'm going up yonder where the sun never go down I'm going to hide behind the mountain where the chilly wind and when I get down, uh, he gonna wipe her uh, every tip of my eye. Uh, I got a hand that shall not. Uh, that will not lie. Uh, I get a body that came. God, all right. Uh, I need somebody to help me live, Jesus. Uh, I need somebody to help me pray his name. Uh, if God been good to you your feet uh, and say yeah somebody say yeah say yeah say yeah I have to cry sometime uh, but crying ain't nothing but my train fell home I uh, walk the flow sometime uh, but that's all right uh, I get weary sometime uh, but that's all right uh, I got a song to sing uh, saying guide me oh thou great Jehovah uh, pilgrim through this barren land uh, I am weak uh, but thou art mighty uh, Guide me with uh, that powerful hand, uh, bread of heaven, uh, bread of heaven, uh, bread of heaven, Lord. Uh, feed me, Lord, uh, till I won't no more. I need you to feed me till my hands look new. Uh, I need you to feed me till my feet do too. Uh, I wouldn't take nothing. <clears throat> I wouldn't take nothing. <laughs> For my journey right now, somebody said, Smith, why you preach so long? Why you preach so loud? But I don't know your story, and I don't know your glory. But every time I think about his goodness and all he done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I got a praise on the inside. I can't keep to myself. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Somebody say yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're listening today, I just want to remind you, don't go to hell or what you think you know. Paul says all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Why are you locked in your home and can't go nowhere? Take out that brand new Bible that you have not read <laughs> and begin to read it. If you don't know where, just start at Psalms 1 and let the Lord begin to open your heart. Give God some time. He will respond to you just like you respond to him. My father had a song you sing. He said, if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and lead them down. Finally, I leave you with this. Jesus said, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound. 
Whatsoever you loose shall be loosed. Today, by the word of God, we bind the hands of sickness. We bind the hands of suffering. We bind the hands of this virus. We bind the hands of all of our enemies. And we lose peace. We lose power. And we lose joy in the Lord. We thank God for this day. We thank God for this time. I pray that he will continue to bless your life. Members of New Salem, the church will be open from 12, from 11 to 12. You're able to drop your tithes off. Amen. If you're a member anywhere, don't forget to support your church. Your church has bills going on, just like your home has bills going on. Those of you, some of you all are texting me to see uh, where you can send money to right now. The church does not have any electronic account set up. But you can either Facebook, I'm sorry, you can either uh, PayPal to my phone number or you can cash out to my phone number. And be sure in the, in the uh, four slot, put New Salem. I will make sure that the church gets it and you will get a re electronic or a physical receipt in the church ensuring you that your contributions were contributed. My phone number is area code 901-299-2757. Nine zero one two nine nine two seven five seven. If you cash app or PayPal any amount to that number, it, and just be sure to write New Salem on the four line. Again, I'll be sure that the church receives your donation, and you will receive uh, a confirmation from the church, electronic or physical, however you choose to receive it. But again, uh, we thank God for you. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for this day. May God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.